Welcome to the Rainmaker Multiplier On Demand, a podcast for leading financial professionals or rainmakers and their teams that offer support for securing a successful future. From marketing help to staffing structure, listen and subscribe for actionable insights from advisors and skilled professionals alike. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another coffee break. Great to have you all here with us. Uh, my name is Kayla Mackey, Executive Vice President here at C2P. Uh, very delighted to be joined by two awesome individuals. Uh, I'll, I'll start with you, Greg, although you probably don't need any introduction to this audience. Obviously, you are the president and CEO of Hammer Financial Group, uh, both a mentor here and a partner here at C2P. And then also with us is Emily Agresta. Uh, she is a financial advisor at Hammer Financial Group. And as I just learned a few minutes ago, currently studying for her CFP and right there at that end stage. So hopefully uh, a CFP here very soon. As we said, today's topic is implementing an intern program to secure new talent. So Greg, I'd like to toss it over to you first. Can you share a little bit maybe about how you came to know Emily, how she joined Hammer Financial Group, and maybe a little bit about your perspective on her experience as she started as an intern and eventually now as a financial advisor, and again, as I said, a future CFP? Yeah, so you know, this actually started probably eight, nine years ago as we were beginning to grow a little bit of the timeline. We had a, just a couple of advisors, a couple of preparers were growing the tax practice. And part of the challenge is always trying to find people for the advisor or career path because I felt like it still exists today, but at the time it was the people that were doing well in the industry didn't really have an interest right, to move or do stuff with it. And then the people that weren't doing well, you didn't want to hire. And it was how do we find or develop these people? And this was the, the thought process was interns are always a great opportunity for them to learn the industry, to come in, see if they really like it, but also give us the opportunity to get familiar with those individuals and see potentially if there could be a fit in this industry and then begin to expose them to it in a way that wasn't critical in terms of making a living. And what I mean by that is you're, you're talking primarily with uh, juniors and seniors at the time. And we went to the local colleges and we brought them in during tax season. And if uh, we ran a pretty significant tax practice for years, we scaled it back. But we would always bring in interns at that point that had an interest either in accounting, that type of industry, and or the financial industry. So they would be able to come in, learn some of the aspects in the accounting world, get their experience and provide value for us in that spot. But also the interns that would come in from the financial side would get exposed to the part of the industry uh, that you typically don't that allows us to do the things we do in the way of tax planning and tax management. And so we would typically look to bring in four to five interns for that 10, 12 week period during tax season. And the nice thing, comfortable thing about the intern program, if, if we didn't feel like they wanted to progress in areas of our need, the intern would end and they would get value. We would get value. Everybody was win situation. And as we began to do this, we began to develop really strong relationships with some of the local colleges to the point where they would post these things for us in the college. And, and even to the point where we found Emily, one of the professors actually called us and Emily was the only intern to date that we hired actually as a sophomore while she was still in there. So she actually worked the intern, but part-time with us for three years of why still being in school. She came out of college, very well exposed to the industry and really got a better understanding of the intricacies of what it is to be an advisor. And I think the value in that is uh, the difficulty we had to have today and will probably continue to have is when you hire somebody, one, are they the right fit for the dynamics of the office? Do they get along? But more importantly, do they have a really strong interest in what this industry is about? And do they understand enough of it? Because this industry is an industry that your success, I feel, is directly determined by longevity. Right. If you can survive the first couple of years, then there's an opportunity to do it. So Emily actually started with us as a sophomore. Emily, I'd like to throw it over to, to you. Obviously, Purdue University, as I was reading on your bio a little bit earlier, as Hammer just mentioned, starting as a sophomore. Can you just give us a little bit about your experience coming into the Hammer Financial Group as an intern? And, and obviously now a success story is becoming an advisor and, and a future rainmaker. We are recording this, so just keep that in mind as you describe your experience with working with Greg and Hammer Financial. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Becoming an intern, especially in the financial services industry, it was a whole new experience for me. I was an 18 year old college kid. I knew that it was important to get experience, especially being in finance. I really had no idea what I wanted to do. So I think that was definitely one of the first experiences that I has had was just trying to figure out what it is I wanted to do. And coming into here, obviously, it was a little frightening because I was a college student, right? I had no idea what I wanted to do and, and how I was going to get there. So I think that was really the first step is just seeing if one, if I liked the industry and if this was something that I wanted to do. Previously, I had worked in other areas. So obviously it was, it's totally different as there's a lot of moving parts in here too. So it was a little nerve wracking at first. But once obviously I got acclimated and got familiar with the different aspects of the business, it was good. And do you feel as an intern, it really prepared you? Obviously you got the exposure, right? You got to, to see an, uh, an advisor offers, make sure that is maybe the path I want to take. Did you feel really prepared to join full time after your internship? Yes, by the different steps that we took here and we've set up the uh, intern and even the paraplanner uh, program to work in different phases and expose the students or whatever, if you're a full-time position or whatever it may be. So yeah, I definitely did. It's a lot of knowledge and it's a lot of information that you just don't get in college. They don't teach this stuff. Yeah, I, I've always said there's a difference between kind of what you're taught in the, the textbook world and in the real world, right? They, there, there is a difference there. Um, Greg, I'm, I'm assuming you didn't stop at Emily and say our internship was, uh, program was successful. Now we're going to shut it down. So, so talk about the current state of, of what you're doing now at Hammer Financial Group when it comes to uh, your, your intern program. Well, again, I think it's significant for everybody to understand that this was not a one offer, right? We found the one diamond in the rough, so to speak, because one of our first interns that takes a huge leadership role in our organization now is Casey Johansson. So Casey, I think, came in maybe a year before you asked, is that correct? Or yeah. not too far before, but Casey came in as a senior and Casey is now part of our leadership team. Casey produces at a lead advisor level in our organization, which mandates at least 12 million of new production per year. He presents with me on the different occasions. He handles a lot of our entry fit calls, and he is taking on much more responsibilities of the organization as part of that continuity continuation plan. So the idea is law of large numbers. So we know going in that we're going to give to the accounting world. We knew we weren't going to be able to retain those individuals because if they were going to progress to a CPA, they have to do real work experience in a CPA office in order to get their credentials. So a lot of it was just giving them the opportunity we value, they value, but typically you're going to, we've been doing this for probably 10 years. So we probably had 50 interns. That being said, we've had a ton of quality people on the tax side that we knew weren't going to be able to continue with Hammer Financial Group that have valued. They still come back and visit. We have people that come in and they're in the office and hanging out with us and telling us where they've been. But we've had Casey that's become part of the organization. And then obviously Emily and then uh, Todd uh, is uh, now in the associate advisor path. And we've had some other quality people come in. Some have had, had the challenges with the exams and then some just opportunities pop up because of that experience that they look to take them. And we just congratulate them, thank them and they move on. But it's definitely a way to put yourself in front of the younger generation and get them acclimated with so that they do come on. Uh, Emily and, 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 and Casey and Todd are proof they, they come on running, right? That they're moving the feet around the ground and, and they're productive parts of the team right out of the onset. And, and they have a very specific vision of where they want to go. Got a, got a couple questions in chat. So I'll let either one of you address them, obviously. So from Jamie, are, are these paid internships? And, and then if you have a typical pay range, if they are paid, and then how much uh, work do you have the interns do at Hammer? Yes, so they are paid. I just, I feel like that's, I, I don't ever want to take advantage of somebody. Paid internships, we've adjusted the scale upwards as, as we've gone with it. It used to be $10. Now you can't buy a cup of coffee for that. I think our new scale is going to be 17 as we move forward for the interns. Um, but if you call your local colleges, 
they will welcome the opportunity for you to provide internships for the college. When you go to college, and I'm going through this now with my oldest as you're investigating, the questions always come up, how do you get people out in the work world? How do you get them opportunities to learn? How do you improve their resume, so to speak? So any college that you talk to, if you just go to their career development go right to their career development and say, hey, we're going to provide paid internships. This is the time frame. This is what we're looking for. They will, I can't imagine that they wouldn't jump at it because they, that's part of what they're doing. And Emily, if you could share a little bit about the career opportunities and what they did. Yeah, absolutely. So most of the like college of businesses, they do have a, a delegated person who's in some type of career development, whether it be for alumni or even like the current students. So that's exactly what I did. I just went to the business school and I, I just told them I was looking for an internship. And then again, they pulled up a list of different companies in the area that they were working with. And that's exactly how I found Hammer. Another nice thing about it too, is I did get credits for some of my uh, courses and Purdue did offer that. So I actually basically didn't have to go to a traditional class in order to pass it. My internship counted towards that. Plus I was getting experience and getting paid. And I do want to add, cause they asked how much work do they do? The interns work. I I'm going to tell you right now, um, a lot of what we have them do in the overflow of tax season or the overflow of open enrollment, is a lot of task-driven work, but we also make a very direct point with all the interns that we give them the opportunity to actually physically sit in on appointments. Now, we're not going to have an intern sitting in on a diamond discovery, but we have tons of activity in our office that are from every level of discovery, design, deliver, dedicated appointments where we ask clients, can you come in and sit in? So it's a combination. If they're not sitting in those, and we tell them, is you need to, this is part of your exposure. This is what we're willing to do. You need to learn. You need to schedule an appointment a week with every advisor. So they'll get six to eight hours of real live experience, fly on the wall type thing, sitting, seeing what it's about, how it is. And you see a lot of saucer eyes. It really opens their eyes to what the industry is. And they're just super, super appreciative of the fact that even the one that we recently lost to another job offer, he couldn't have been more thankful. He's, I learned stuff in the three months that I was here that didn't even touch the education level of what I was getting into college to give me a really strong feeling about what to expect in the work world. Remember, these kids are college kids. They've never really worked a real job. So some of them will look to hide in the tasks. I have to actually drag some of them out because you give them projects and they're diligent about it. They're dedicated about it. They want to get it done. And I say, you still need to schedule appointments and they're afraid. So you, you give them some real experience about how to break out of a shell. Like Emily said, she was terrified coming in. So you just say, here's what you're going to do. Here's the structure and here's the appointments you're going to sit on. Nice thing about tax season, we had them doing deliveries with some of our regular clients. Sit in, this person's super nice. They're going to have a great time with you and just go over what these certain areas or they'll sit in with an advisor. So it's combination. It, it definitely gives a ton of value to Hammer Financial Group for the work that we need to get done in those compressed times, even not the compressed times. Like right now, we're super busy with everything going on with the interest rates the way they are. And they're constantly helping with the administrative tasks, which is what the career path is anyways. How are they going to start, right? They're going to learn from ground floor everything that you need to know as if you were running the office yourself. So every bit of it is beneficial to them. We get it, the value of them working hard and doing a very good job for the most part, right? They just need to be taught. But I just think the biggest value for them is the exposure to the world, for lack of a better word. Really and they well, leave yeah. here a lot more confident. And we know that 85%, 90% of them are not going to be Hammer Financial Group employees. You have to go in with that expectation. But I don't think there'd be a person that would be disappointed with a Casey Johansson, an Emily Agresta, Todd Gaverse, and some of the other people that we have developing through our intern program. Emily is on track as a lead advisor. That's the step she's trying to make this year. She She's going to hit, what's your number this year, Emily? 12 million. 
12 million, and she's a number. little off track, but close. And you're talking about somebody that I don't even want to tell you how young she is. She could, she's, she could be my daughter for crying out loud. And I wish I had that type of exposure when I was joining this industry and that type of support. So you can provide a really strong opportunity for a young kid that's willing to put the time in and work. And that's the, the other part of this. Caleb is, if I don't feel like somebody has that drive, if I don't feel yeah. like they have the right dynamics, they still get a good experience. And one of the interns, I think he's going to be an actuary, super, super smart, ridiculously smart, but he's not going to be an interface with clients. It's just not his build, his makeup, but he's the one that I had to force into appointments, but he loved the exposure. He's very grateful again. And the guy's already taking his actuarial exams and passing them while he's still in college. He's going to be in the back room figuring out the math for us so we can provide products to the clients. A couple of questions that came in from a networking standpoint with these colleges. Obviously, uh, Emily, you came from Purdue. Do you, you need, I know obviously Hammer's program has expanded over time. You're probably working with more colleges now than you did originally. Is there a good starting point for somebody that, that wants to, to maybe create an internship program, doesn't have one? Is it just their local college? Should they look for specific things at that college, whether it's like a specific program or major? Do you have any advice on maybe how to start that networking process in, in, in identifying colleges that could potentially provide interns? Yeah, so if we're going to stay specific to the, the, the mainstream, it's the finance, it's that business degree with it. I would say the the accounting and that end of it would be more if you're doing the tax practice as well. But you just define what you want your internship to do. I, I like a three-month internship as a structure because it gives you enough time to evaluate that individual, but it's three months. At the end of three months, the internship ends and it's a nice way to separate on good terms. And then you can go to the next intern and then just decide what type of volume. If you're an advisor with an assistant, you're not gonna bring on five interns at once like we did for tax season. But you can begin to offer intern programs and, and the way I would approach it is call the college, say, hey, what do you have in the way of a, a finance degree or program or business program for people that might want to enter our interest our industry we're looking to create an intern program with it and we have several local colleges we called them all and contacted them all the one that emily went was purdue their branch of the big purdue down in lafayette but we have there's other colleges that are all around here the the junior college type structures that there's a lot of quality kids in those programs and so you say, this is what we're looking to do. And then just define your internship program. The thing that you want to be cognitive of is you can have them come in and just do tasks and they'll be happy to do the tasks and put a resume. But if you create the value for them and what you want to learn and expose them, have them start doing part of the paraplanner process, right? Start doing some of these entries, start sitting in on cases with me, see if you like the way we interact, have them do some follow-up calls, have them talk to clients. These kids never talk to somebody outside their family, probably in the business world ever. And see how they react to it and give them that opportunity. And then at the end of that internship, you're going to know a lot about the makeup of that individual, their personality, how they work with the team, the value they could bring to the organization, how the clients react to them. You're going to see that clients are going to react to some of these interns in a way, hey, there's more here. And then you could talk about extending an opportunity and do a contract for a short term and try to develop into a, a future employee of your organization. I was just going to say another thing, like Greg said, is just making sure that they're really seeing the value in the things that we do. Because I know sometimes we get so caught up in things, especially like during tax season, right? We're just trying to get people in and out of the door. But I think what we do, which is really beneficial, is we actually sit down with the interns and, and we'll talk through things. And I know... Even when I was going through it and I was, Casey and I were like the guinea pigs of trying to figure out, okay, what should we do and what should be the phases of an internship? Um, and it was something as simple as I would sit down, I think it was every week or maybe every other week with with our another advisor, um, Scott here, and him and I would just talk through things and he would tell me the differences between, you know, I, I didn't even hear what a Roth IRA was until I got here, right? Those are just things that they don't teach in college, but are just so incredibly valuable that you need to know whether, you know, stay in this industry and decide to become a financial advisor 
or just having real world knowledge, whether you go do something else too. So I think just sitting down and spending the time with them too, that's really what helped me. And that's where I got a lot of my foundational knowledge was from just asking Greg afterwards, Hey, what was this? Why'd you, why would you do this? Things like that. Yeah. And that Jamie had asked about the hours. So that's actually a very good question because we didn't want to hire interns for 40 hours. Number one, you're not going to find them. They're still full-time students, right? But offering a structure that you're comfortable with, you have to be flexible because you tell them, hey, your classes are our number one priority. You need to make sure if you need study time, you're letting us know. You have to have that type of flexibility with the kids coming in because if they're good kids and they're dedicated to their work and their classes and they're getting good grades, last thing you want to do is derail that, right? So you want to give them that flexibility. I like the 10 to 15 hours. And if you want somebody in the office 20 or 30 hours, now you have the opportunity to hire two or three interns and get a broader scope of people to develop or look at. So as you come in with these intern programs and you want to get a mix, you can bring in two interns at 12 hours a week. And you got somebody there 24 hours a week to help you and learn the industry and potentially create an opportunity for your organization. I started with the internship program with the intent of providing value for these kids. And if you go in it with that intention, that you're going to provide value for these kids and it's not about Hammer Financial Group, I am of the belief that if you go in with that type of intent to provide just value for these kids to, to learn and experience, that it'll come back tenfold for you. And it has for us. Casey, Emily, and Todd represent 20 million of our business for the first half of the year. Fantastic success. I had a, a quick follow-up question on that. Do you, do you find it's better to bring in groups of interns one at a time? Uh, is, is it not really matter? Is, is there an advantage to bringing two interns at, at the same time? Or just that comment like bunker mentality that might might exist? I'll, I'll let Emily add to this, but I, I yes is the answer because if they're in there by themselves, they're they're on an island. Right. Yeah. I like multiple interns because they hey, they rally together to a degree right. and they feel more comfortable. They're not the only one that doesn't know anything in the room. Right. So they understand that, oh, this is typical. This is OK to ask questions. This is OK not to know what the heck I'm doing. This is OK to be afraid. This is OK to stumble and make mistakes. And if they're by themselves, I think you run a higher risk of those people not wanting to continue because they feel like they're not having the success or failure. Emily, can you speak to that a little bit, too? Yeah, we try to bring in a couple different ones for the financial side of it and the tax side of it. And I think that's just beneficial because again, you're getting you're getting just different people, right? You're getting people with different work ethics, right? And you're getting to spend time with each one of them just to see how they develop. And I think if we just stuck it out to having one every three months, I think that would make it a little bit harder because again, you, you get different bunches of them, right? You get the ones that are really driven and, and they're ready to go. And then you get some other ones, like Greg said, that you kind of have to force into your meetings and have to like, just bring them to you and teach them things. So I think having a few at a time is definitely better for that, for those reasons. We only got a few minutes left, about five minutes left. A any other questions anybody has? This has been extremely helpful, Greg and, and Emily, hearing, hearing how you guys have built this over time. And Emily, obviously, your direct experience. But any other questions that anyone in the, the, the audience has for, for Greg or Emily? Any kind of final tips, words of wisdom, uh, best practices you've developed over the, the time you've been doing this, Greg? Again, typical pay, what came up from Carol is, is, is there, you, you said about $17 an hour now That's, a day. Yeah, it's going to be different. Carol is in California, so she yeah. might not even get somebody to walk across <laughs> the street for $17 an hour. But yeah, a lot of it is understanding the intern program. They're not looking to make huge pay. They want the experience too. But you do want to make it because interns, the, people pay for interns. So you can't, if they can go into the McDonald's and make more money, that's the short-term vision of some of these kids. I just think for me, if you really want to provide value to the younger generation today, if you go into it with the kind of the mindset, you know what, let me just expose kids to this world. Let me expose kids to this industry and don't necessarily look for that immediate gratification because it will take time. 
I think you'll reap the rewards of it. We, Like I said, it's so gratifying when I walk in the office to see one of these old interns come in and just feel good about coming into the office, sitting and visit with somebody, say, hey, I want to stop by and say hi, knowing that they're flourishing with whatever they decide to do beyond Hammer Financial Group. And it's very rewarding to, to see that and have those kids excel and feel good about what they're going on. Some of these kids absolutely come in petrified. I'm going to tell you, like they're afraid to even talk. And for some reason, people are afraid to talk to me. They don't let me I talk to any of the why. interns for the first two weeks. I'm not yeah, even in the hiring process. Not shocked yeah. by this, Greg. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't know. It's maybe I'm such a quiet, mild-mannered person. Yeah. Uh, can't be intimidating at all, right? <laughs> no. Oh, geez. Yeah, real quick, I'll just share. I remember when I was first working here, Greg had asked me something that I, I didn't even know what he was talking about. I looked at him like he had a third eye. And he was just like, okay, don't tell anybody I asked you. <laughs> but yeah, I think just to finish it up, I think it's definitely worth it. All I would say is just obviously be patient too with the different mix of people that you're going to come across. It's just trial and error. But like Greg said, I think it's great on a level of being able to provide that to some of the kids, just getting that real world experience. And then you may get some great opportunities and get some great employees from it too. We just have one of the interns, is actually Deb's son, very interested in the industry. And because of the exposure over the summer, end up taking his life and health and his exam already and passed them. He goes, I feel good about the industry. I didn't know if I wanted to get into it. Mom and dad are both into it. And he's excited about the opportunity to potentially look at it as a career for himself. And he's already put himself ahead of the curve. Awesome. Thank you both so much for, for your, you know, your, everything you, you shared today was, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed this, this topic today and this discussion. Um, for those of you that want to know more about uh, not necessarily the internship side, but, but certainly the career pathing side, uh, I would highly encourage you, if you haven't already, to attend an upcoming teamwork movement training. Uh, a lot of what Greg and, and Emily have, have put together in, in terms of uh, things you can have the interns do, especially if you don't have a tax practice, it overlaps with what we call the, the Client Service Associate, the CSA program. That's the bottom rung of the advisor career path. So you can use a lot of that, uh, obviously, also with interns as, as well in terms of those administrative operations tasks, especially uh, as they get going. Uh, Greg, Emily, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. So until next Thursday, everyone have a fantastic week, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. This podcast was brought to you by C2P, an organization whose purpose is to educate, train, grow, and support holistic financial advisors so families can achieve true prosperity. Never miss an episode by subscribing now to discover new resources and strategies. Visit c2penterprises.com to learn how we can help scale and secure your business. At the time of delivery and any subsequent publishing, information was deemed reliable but is subject to change by the time of listening or viewing. The contents of this piece include options and projections of C2P, are subject to change, and are for informational purposes only. The information provided in this presentation is not intended to be individual investment, tax, or legal advice.